It is 7.33 on April Fool's Day, and I'm calling uh, the RTM F&B um, meeting together. Um, our guests are uh, Joe McCann, who's chair of the Board of Ed, James Palin, who's chair of the Board of Finance, and John Cini is making his return, who's vice chair of the Board of Ed, and we're happy to have all three of them there, and we promise we wouldn't get John too upset. So, just joking. All right, so here's what I'd like to do at today's meeting. We're going to start with the Board of Selectmen, but um, we've already had some reviews going on, and um, so... Um, uh, we should go through what they were, um, and I'll start off with uh, Jenny. You were there under the uh, Park and Rec, so you can go through that, um, and then I'll cover the other ones that they've already started discussing. I have an iPhone. I have no idea who that is. Okay. Um, yeah, so the you know we were at the Board of Finance meeting last week. There was really good discussion on um, Parks and Rec. They have um, really the the items that came up were the primary ones that uh, that we talked about were the um, parking lot, the capital projects for the parking lot at Cher at Cherry Lawn for the Nature Center, which uh, I think they're going to wait to confirm um, with the, I think it was a two hundred sixty five thousand. Um, request for repaving which certainly needs a lot of repair but the question is whether how good is that number and how confident are we in that estimate and is there is it possible it can be patched so we'll wait to hear uh, i know that dan Bumgardner got uh reached out and was going to try to get some questions answered there so we'll wait and see on that the other one was the um it's a small item but it's it's a it's not really, it's an $8,000 um, request for a traffic study at, at Cherry Lawn. And I think um, the general consensus was the tra tra an $8,000 traffic study begets a larger capital project coming down the pipe. And as we're in it, this is a, this is a tough year um, for both budgets. And in the and in the category that Parks and Parks and Rec has been the beneficiary, particularly of ARPA, um, they've gotten almost about thirty percent of all the town's ARPA funds, and they've got a lot of projects to manage. Um, discussion was had: Is this the year to really be adding another capital project to their plate? Um, and given the fact that ARPA's got a deadline on it, and I know that all the not all outstanding unallocated monies for parks and rec. They do have other projects that they need to wrap up a couple of playgrounds. They've got um, a pretty, they've got a lot of resources at, I would say labor that they need to allocate to the weed beach remediation um, invasives remediation, remediation project. And the fact they also don't have a director at the moment. I know they're the town's in a search for a parks and rec director that our general sense of our meeting, and we've had this discussion before, um, um, and I think Board of Finance has more to discuss about it, but this would be a good year to sort of take a breath on some of these, uh, wait till the Parks and Rec capital projects clear. Maybe they get a new Parks and Rec director who may or may not, I don't know what, who, they They're may gonna have, have a different, different direction. There's a good yeah. chance they're going to have a different direction. So, and um, and also, let's give them about three, four months to go and settle in. So that's going to take some time. And okay. um, you know, I'm going to be blunt about this. Um, yeah, if this does come to the RTM, I'm going to vote it down. This is this is just an unreasonable request at this time. Um, it is $8,000 when they get their feet on the ground, as was mentioned in the Board of Finance, um, and everything is thought out, and we know exactly what's going on. It's something that could be brought back to the Board of Selectmen, Board of Finance, and they could pay for this out of their capital contingency fund. 
Ahead, I want to add in. one. Can I add one thing on the? Uh, You're going to add two study? things on this. Yeah. <laughs> It's just that I would like to see whenever we decide that we are going to do anything that has the word study in it, I would like to know what the goal of the study is and what decisions it's supposed to inform. Because what I've seen in the past, not, not with Parks and Recs, but what I've seen over, you know, a decade is sometimes you study something and then you just have a whole another set of questions and then you just kind of spiral. So what what problem are we trying to solve? And um, what are the options on the table? No, it does no good to do a study if we're not going to spend a lot of money to reroute traffic over there. It just it's might as well not even ask the question. So well, it, it, it still goes back to that Cherry One is overprogrammed. And it goes back to something that I mentioned at the Board of Finance. I am not in favor of any park and rec analysis on open space until I understand what the strategy for all open spaces in this town is. We have Great Island, we have town-owned properties, we have park and rec properties, we have board of ed properties. I don't know how many walking trails we need. I don't know how many ADA compliant ones we need. I don't know how many playgrounds we need. I don't know where we are on these things. I don't know how many racquetball, pickleball, um, tennis courts we need. Where are they located? What are the timings of it? I don't know what we're planning to do on some of the boat ramps, on the docks, on where we're putting boats and that. Until somebody can go and tell me a real overall strategy with an operations plan that then can say these are the priorities for the whole town it's time to stop the dueling banjos with as i say the one who plays first or plays the loud loudest gets the money and then we come back and say oh we should have also paid on that we have a high operating budget this year quite honestly gang it doesn't look much better for next year. And so we better understand where we're allocating our funds. That's not saying we don't do capital improvement, but there's a lot going on. One of the things you mentioned was Weed Beach. I don't know how Weed Beach fills into this overall strategy. And the mere fact that we bought property and haven't done bupkis with it for 10, 15 years does not meet my strategic needs of why we're investing a million dollars. Just doesn't. If I did that in my business and said, well, we've had this for a whole bunch of time, we never did anything with it, they would have kicked me out of a very high floor at Chase. And I and I think it's time we start doing the same thing. Well, yeah, and <laughs> some other some other key drivers is that they're, you know. It is. They did reduce the um, expected programming revenues, so there's there's an expectation that revenues won't be quite as strong. Now, recreational programming, in my opinion, is kind of a pass through, right? Um, the real net cost of operating Parks and Rec is, I think, the budget's like a million eight, and the real cost is um, just under about a million dollars. So, but the fact that programming is, was reduced by Kate uh, on the expectation that um, it spiked kind of right around post COVID and people were excited to get back outside. But now that things are sort of back into the original, you know, their, their normal rhythms, um, we could see a reduction in that. And that does have an impact on traffic and congestion in different parts of the <laughs> parks and rec property. So, yeah, let's um, move on from Parks and Rec to some of the other ones. Okay. Um, the we we met with the library. Um, library numbers looked good. Um, they're currently um, there may have been a slight mathematical error, so um, Kira and Jen are working on that, and. Um, that'll get back to the Board of Finance before the final numbers. But other than that, um, the library looked fine. Um, the rep I, I can say that the reports we're getting from Kira are head and shoulders above what we got from her predecessor. Um, and hopefully the interaction that's going on between the town administrator and the, um, uh, what's called? 
and and the library and when you can comment on that is far more open than it used to be in the past and i think that's a very good thing uh, because they're a very good partner to have in this town so it's a really good library so um you know so that's positive um so we did general government um nothing was out of the ordinary on that um the we also did um the building departments um and i will tell you that the rtm planning zoning and housing already approved the building department and pnz um i may have passed around to some of you their meeting it's it's always worthwhile to listen to jeremy ginsburg he's really just super on that um but um, i do have a question that i'm going to pass on to jim um it, it's only a little thing but over the years we um accrue um for the um um which called for some um the plan of conservation development and conservation and we do it over a three-year period and i think it's maybe fifty thousand this year but since the whole amount is there and it's going into the capital account i'm just curious how much jeremy really intends on spending this year um, because we can always um, add to future year numbers. I think it's someplace in the neighborhood of about e either 150 or 200. And I think it's like 50,000 this year, a large number next year, when a lot of the work's going to be done in a small third year. It does take three years to put together. And the person who had been doing it in the past for the town um, is retiring within that three years, so we will be using somebody new, which I know both Amy and Jeremy said was unfortunate because he's very good at what he does. Um, what else did we cover? I think that was basically what the Board of Finance um, covered in their meetings. Um, then on Thursday is police um emergency services um public works and i must be missing somebody of um some significant I, oh i think we also did youth services um on you did all the human services health department senior center and youth services is was already done but so there's why don't you explain some of that moment for us um there's their budgets if they've gone up, it's there's really no changes to their budgets. They went up sometimes because of the salary study, which um, adjusted people's salaries. Um, and there were there was conversation about how much should be in revenue. Like for example, um, you know, like well, I guess that's fire. But the health department when they there's. We're going to have a bigger budget in the health department, for example, with when you increase the restaurants and nail salons because they have to be inspected and there's no revenue associated with that. So um, so you see expenses, but nothing offsetting and senior center. It's um, it's a great senior center. So um, you there's it's mostly because of inflation with food that you see the increases there um, and youth services there's not much change to it. So I don't know. I think there's not much action in these budgets. Um, there's things that were cut by the town administrator. Um, maybe I would do things differently, but I think that for me, when I look at these kinds of areas, the biggest challenge I have is that there's no way to really trade off or there's no way to assess like what really should Darianne's pro um, priorities be, you know, for like what, where, where should we really be allocating this money? Because when you take a budget and you say, okay, it's up 4%, that's fine. Okay. But should we be spending all that money on it, on it anyway? Like um, youth, youth services is my example, because I happen to know a lot of this stuff. Um, you know, the, the, I think it's great that we have camp, in the, in the summer, I think that's fine. But do we really want a, a robust department that's trying to meet the needs of, of Darien kids? Or is that being done really through other organizations? We also fund the depot. 
Um, we also have lots of other organizations in town that do this. And um, I guess my next thought would be, what's your measure of success? Like, are the programs that we're offering within youth, youth services really worth our, our, our money? Um, because it's not a huge budget, but would we rather have that or would we rather have, um, you know, more money to maintenance in our parks or, um, you know, some of these other things? And I don't want to, you know, I don't want the departments fighting, but I, I that's my biggest struggle, I guess, with some of this stuff is that I'm not sure that we've decided where we sh what we should be, what services, the bucket of services that we really think we should be concentrating on to offer for all of the residents of Darien. And with budgetary pressures with this year and then looking like next year might be similar, I think it's time to start doing some of that. And it's hard when you just look at one budget in isolation. Yeah, I think that I think that should be a consistent theme coming out of this group. You know, it was one thing when we didn't have rising debts, but we are going to have rising debt um, going on because of um, HHR, even Ox Ridge um, is out there and um, the um, Great Island and other things like that. And even though the Board of Finance does a great job in managing the level of when we're paying principal, when we're paying interest, the fact of the matter is, is our debt's going to rise. And when everything else was small and and that, it was okay. We could do a 2% increase or 3% with some masking. Some budgets were actually, we taxed more than what we should have. Some people were giving monies back so we could mask what the increases were from year to year. The commercial properties were moving up um, so that, um, you know, because commercial properties are revalued every year. So that was the growth that we were having in our brand list. That was covering another one to two million dollars. But at some time, now is the time to start saying, and it's hard to do it in this budget cycle, but we have a whole nother 15 months to start saying, let's relook at things. You know, in um, social emotional, who's doing what, where? Where are we overlapping? Where should we be open, overlapping? Where do, should we step out and let others do it? Um, and what is the right group to do it? So, um, yes, it's a hot topic. And yes, I will always be supportive of social emotional. I'm just picking on that. But even what youth activities are we doing it? What's the audience for that youth activities? Whether or not it's successful and what's going on? These are things that we should be doing now and either revamp what we're doing or not do it anymore. So um, those are the things that um, I'm suggesting we start to um, look at in, in, in the next 15 months, because I think it's the only way that one's going to control these budgets is to really think Odd and of, of how we're doing all the budgets. Uh, Melinda, I think that's what you and I were talking about. Please add on to it because you may articulate it better than I. No, I, th I think I think to say I think to save meaningful dollars moving forward, reviewing you know a health department budget alone and making sure that the rise is only two or three percent or four percent or five percent or it's understandable isn't isn't i mean that's that's good it's just a lot of man hours that we're spending where really i think it's 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 a much bigger piece of what are we what are we really committed to um you know and that doesn't mean that you have a, a list like the schools get everything they want and then we move to the police and they get everything and then we move to the park i don't mean it like that but we should know where our priorities are um and we should also know whether things are working or not. And I think that there's probably a lot of money in some of these areas with programs that have been run for a very long time or things we've done a certain way for a very long time that are not efficient or not 
worth the money that we're doing because someone else will do it better. Yeah, Melin, if I might amplify on that, I, I like what you just said, but, and there's a giant but here, um, that we all want top schools. We want schools to get what the, the schools to get what they need so that we can have that, mm -hmm. that um, of designation. And we want to have top parks and we want to have top, you, it, you know, t from my point of view, I'm looking at the debate that we've had this year and I feel like, um, it, you know, there's no such thing as a free lunch. And right. if you want to have all of these things, then we have to live up to it the same way that we wanted the park. We wanted Great Island. And, you know, where people seem to be complaining about budgets now, well, we voted on it. And therefore, it's time, you know, you, you can't... It, you can't run away from the fact that there's a price tag for all this. So I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to criticize the people that are criticizing the high budgets because we all want the common sense things that you just talked about. But um, it, you can't if you want to have it all, then you have to pay for it. No, but I agree. And maybe we would actually decide that we want to pay for it all. But I'm just, I'm just saying that, like, just taking a looking at each individual budget is not is is not going to get you the savings in this environment. It's going to be deciding, like, again, let's talk about youth services. Is TOPS working? First of all, are we covering all of our all of our costs for TOPS? We've been doing TOPS forever. It's the same as it's always been. There's been issues at TOPS. Is it really, why, why are we doing the TOPS program? Is it fulfilling what we want to do or are we just doing it? And we're, as taxpayers, are supporting that program. So it's just, that's not a difference maker alone, but I'm saying over the, over the whole budget, like what things are we wanting to do? Like, do you want the library open on Sundays? We could save a lot of money if you didn't have the library open on Sundays. Like, what did the residents really value here? And they can't well, value everything the same way. Does that make I, sense? Like, I mean, I hope you want the library you open. You can have anything you want, but you can't have everything you want. And there, I think there's shade. there are shades of gray in each department when you look at everything holistically. Yes, there, there comes a point where like, okay, yes, these are all the things we want. The next question is, when do we really want them and when do we really need them can this wait is right. this emergent like so it's there's timing um that's also a piece of it too and there's i and i agree with you some I think, diligence you know, looking yeah look yeah. and looking at ways to optimize and and find some efficiencies i mean we saw that when we're going to be talking about the board of ed the transportation they they came up with a very they found a lot, some inefficiencies and they're capitalizing on which is great so but, yes i hear you well, one thing, one thing I struggle with is for some things like the youth services, like, okay, the, the Halloween window painting, right. how do you even measure whether that's worth it or not? I, I, I mean, it's, is it fun for the kids? Yeah, I think it is. Does it matter that much? I have no idea. How would we assess? That's one of those things I struggle with. I feel like education's a little easier than trying to figure out stuff like that. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. Well, that's why I think it just exists from year to year to year. But the question is, what are we spending on it? And, and if I said you have 10 programs you can do or five programs you can do, you have to determine which one is hitting the broadest market or targeted age groups or what age groups are you targeting here to do this, then that starts to quantify what we're doing. And we're picking on youth services, but it's something that needs to be done across the town because what are we doing? What are the other non-for-profits doing? What are the, what are the religious churches doing? What, what are, the, what's the why doing? What's the schools doing? And where are we competing with each other when, you know, maybe, maybe we should just go um, and, and, and do something. And I understand these are all different silos. Everybody wants to do it, but um, not to, not to get into something that's going to get me into trouble, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, 
My daughter's um, graduate paper as a senior in Swarthmore was that there are too many churches in Westchester, Pennsylvania. And what the problem was is that everybody wanted to have a drug addiction. Everybody wanted to have an alcohol. Everybody wanted to have something that dealt with women. But if the churches got together, they could have provided better programs for one of the poorest communities in, in the country. But because everybody wanted to have their own silo, they weren't as efficient and effective of what was going on. And in fact, she delivered this paper to a bunch of the religious leaders and they started to work together and found out that they were more effective in delivering the services to the whole community, which was really the purpose of what they wanted to do. And that we can do the same thing here in town by having a more a view of why we're doing it. Does somebody else do this better? Can somebody else pick it up? And is it meeting our audience or audiences? And quite honestly, from the time my kids did some of this stuff, I mean, as I said, my oldest is turning 40. The, the fact is what the kids want has also changed and how you deliver to them has changed. So that's just something that is going to be an overriding thought process. We need to come up with a, an overall understanding and operations of open spaces. We need to have a better understanding of how we're providing certain services in town and what our interaction is and where the town should be and allocating its limited resources and where we should not be and maybe reallocating them to a more effective thing. I'm, I'm going to mention this here because I, I think people don't realize that a lot of homeowners are going to really be hit this year regardless of what the operating and capital budgets are. If every year the commercial properties are reassessed their value based upon their rentals and other things, remember we just passed um, the ordinance that allowed the uh, tax assessor to waive certain um, penalties if somebody hands something in late because he couldn't do that before. But every year those things come in and they have a pretty good return on that, but that's why our properties have been growing. It's not just because everybody was building pools during the pandemic. And this is that the commercial properties are assessed every year. So it's not surprising in a reval year that commercial properties increase was less than residential because residential, unless you did a major uh, work on your house, was still being assessed at the old value. And by the way, if you put in that swimming pool, they evaluated what that swimming pool would be worth four years ago at the last assessment, not what it was worth now. That's how the assessments are worked on this. Now everybody's up. So if the town grandless went up by 26 percent and the average resident went up by 29 percent you're already looking at a 10 plus percent increase in your taxes as taxes get registered now many of us had our properties go up by 32 percent a lot of people i've spoken to there are at that category. Well, that means that 32 less 36 is six. That's more than 20% of what your current tax bill is. If you're paying $20,000, you're going to be paying 24 to 25 next year. And that's before we have what is currently a 7% increase in our operating budgets. That's a hit. And so when I listen to parents going up there and saying, I'm willing to pay a hundred dollars more. Okay. Time out. You're not going to be paying a hundred dollars more. We're talking thousands. And so people have to understand what it's really costing to run this town. 
We've been fortunate to use other funds, growth in the grand list, bonding things, paying things down. We haven't really cut capital over the years, even though a lot of the capital isn't in that final report. In one or two years, we didn't even have capital. It was all paid out out of the um, reserve fund for uh, capital now occurring assets, the general fund transfers and other things like that that took place. So the capital was zero in the budget, even though the capital requests were high. Those days have stopped. To have proper financial responsibility, we have to look down the road. Um, there's additional school work, there's flooding, there's sewer work that has to go on, there's other infrastructure that we have to do, bridges and other things like that. And just because every department, every silo, every organization has their number one priorities, doesn't mean that it's a number one priority for the town. And we need to start talking about what's the number one priority for the town. And I know I have two Board of Ed members here. With all due respect, it's not always the schools. There are other things that we have to invest in in this town to move things forward. But it definitely helps that if you're hit with certain high costs that you may not be able to control, health care, transportation, you know, the teacher's contract were in the second year uh, of that, that turnover isn't yielding what we had in the past and that there's a change in the environment. It means you can't do everything else you've been doing for the last couple of years as if you have blinders on. That wouldn't exist any place else in the world. You cannot do that. Well, maybe in a communist country. But last I checked, we were in a communist country. You can't do that. So it means you have to take a deeper dive into the budgets, but not just the board of it. Has to be a deeper dive and rethink. John Zagrosky said, if you want these services, this is the price for these services. If you want this school with everything that's going on, this is the price for it. And maybe it's time that some people understand we're going to end up with a 5 or 6% increase in our mill rate. But I will tell you, if that continues for a couple of years, the desirability for being in Darien, I don't care how good you think these schools are and how good that commute into the city is, which is part of the reason I moved here, and and the beaches, the housing values go down. So, you know, it's just fiscal responsibility really is going to start this year. Um, I, and some of the things that Jenny was talking about, there's some other things that are coming down the road in, in capital that we should really look at. And um, my joke is, I've had some catchwords this year, dueling banjos and that. My new catchword is that maybe it's time we start playing Nancy Reagan. Just say no. We have options here. We can bond things. We can use excess cash to pay for things. We can tax our taxpayers. But another option on some of the capital even on some of the operating budget, is to say no. And I know that's a hard choice, but th that's the choice that may have to be made this year. So um, anyhow, I know that there's some others going on. I've been on my soapbox too often this budget year. Um, the... Um, does anybody, I know that some people have looked at the police. We're doing police public works, and um, there has to be another one that we're doing, emergency services that, that's going on um, Thursday. Um, does anybody want to report on those that they've looked at? Have, have you met with your counterparts? Because for the most part, we've been pretty good. Peter, have you met with your... Um, counterparts on the Board of Finance? 
or at least passed emails back and forth on questions? Hey, Jack, um, I, I think by, by Pete, you mean, you mean Mahopolis, just so we don't get confused with Rufanos, right? I'm sorry? You, you, you were addressing that question to me, not Rufanos, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> no, no, it's uh, okay. It's okay. Um, no, I, I think I, I brought up this question last time. I, I, I think, you know, I saw that we approved in the budget or, or, or proposed in the budget for a new patrol officer. Is, is that still, um, you know, going through or going forward? Um, or it is there right denied? now. Okay. Um, and the only other question I had was with respect to, you know, the the large overtime expense in the budget. And some of it was, you know, due to Memorial Day that all the police need to work that day. But um, there were many other line items there. So, you know, my, my only thought there was, look, I'm a big proponent of police. And does it make sense now that the town is getting bigger and bigger, more and more residents to just hire, you know, more police? I think, you know, you, you made the point earlier that there, there are other you know, topics to discuss other than education, which is clearly very important. I think, I think police is, is a big one as well. Um, you know, there was an incident at Whole Foods um, a week or two ago, which is very unsettling. Um, and so just making sure we're appropriating the right amount to having um, as much police as we can without stretching thin the folks that are already, you know, on the force. So that, that would be my only comment slash question with respect to the police budget. All right, we're gonna uh, we're gonna have to work on going forward with you on so that you get more background on some of this. Um, that's one of the tough things is is that you know Peter, it will take a couple of years, but at the end of this, you'll know that police budget as well as the new chief does. So, um, but they're good questions. I will um, I'll get in touch. Um, in the past, Rob Cadone who's had a family issue, um, is usually on top of that. But I'll speak to Rob and have him speak to you because he really has great knowledge on that, um, that whole area. Jack, I have a question on public works. Small sure. thing. It has to do with um, closing out older capital projects like the Edgerton project that's still outstanding that we allocated 75000 to a few years ago. Still not done or not com yet completed. And I, I think I reached out to um, uh, somebody in my district who was on public work. So are we also looking at those projects where how far back they've been funded and are, and are we closed out? How fast are we closing out? Because I know Ed Gentile has had quite a, a lot, lot to, to do, a lot to do. So I just yeah. want to make sure we're spending the money that we allocated a few years ago to make sure that that gets done. Well, I'll tell you that the Board of Finance does review all projects that are in their capital plan, anything that has not been done over a certain period of time, I forget the exact months at this stage of the game, is revisited. Uh, sometimes it's because it's being combined with something else. Sometimes they just close it out. Um, so, um, or they reallocate the funds to another project. Well, big uh, pile of dirt that yeah, I understand on that. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going to get into the specifics on that, but um, but I'll pass that on to uh, Kate and see what the status is on that and why that. But it's one of the reasons, and you were there, why I asked with the closing out of the ARPA funds with projects that are sitting in the reserve fund for capital non-occurring expenses and now new capital projects. Um, and the fact that we also have Great Island out there that's still having a lot of work and allocation of resources. Are we, are we getting to a point where, yes, we're funding things, but the department doesn't have the capacity to complete the things we're funding? I mean, one of the interesting things that Jen mentioned was that they did not fund the major sidewalks for 750000 this year which we had, but we had funded the prior three years and they're only into uh, halfway through year two, which means that they're essentially a year and a half behind or more than a year behind on what projects they intended to get done versus what they're doing. So yes, it's good that they did not 
initiate the other 750,000 in the budget this year, but it does mean that they're behind. And so what else are we giving to public works that's going to require manpower or people power, FTEs, that we may be taxing or paying for that honestly they're not going to get to. Now, that's one side of it. The other side, which before we get to the Board of Ed, is just a, a statement on special appropriations. Uh, 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 there's been too many off-cycle special appropriations and that really in, in, in my own personal opinion special appropriation should only be unanticipated fixes that cannot wait for the next budget cycle we shouldn't be seeing it or we should have it built into the budget and i know we have quite a few too many of these things are, are becoming tactical. And so your budget's too high, so now I need to do this. But some of the things that were tactical probably should have been discussed by that board or department throughout the year. And if it's in a department discussed with the board of selectmen or discussed at the board of ed, so that we're not getting a last minute analysis on anything. And while I'm happy that the... Um, the alternative on the transportation um, alternative is there. Well, we knew that the contract was coming. Didn't anybody think of looking at this back in August? And 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 that's a concern because we would have had much better information that could have been put appropriately in what's going on. And I'm not saying that it is, but sometimes I feel we're getting some knee-jerk reactions. Sometimes I think that people think they're giving us a special appropriation so it's not being compared to the totality of other projects that are out there and their priorities. And sometimes I, I just think that people think that it can slide by. Oh, it's a special appropriation. We need this. And, you know, in conversations I've had with several people, may, maybe we don't do special appropriations for a while because there's been a lot of off cycle. You know, all of a sudden we have a new mental health director in the Board of Ed budget. They paid it out of their own money, but still we had SSOs that came up. We did some security improvements in August one year. Um, there's another security initiative now that's for a million dollars that's coming off cycle. I'm looking at what other things we have. I, I count the $270,000 to cover their running deficit is something completely different. That's a commitment that we made when we took out um, one of the um, areas. But that's not over simply because of special ed, because they are getting back about $100,000 more than what was budgeted, even with the change in that, than what was the original budget on ECR. And one of the big issues are is that where we anticipate that we're going to be able to hire a teacher at a lower level, we're, we're not being able to accomplish that. And that's off by maybe $200,000 as well. So between that and some of the costs of special ed are the real reasons why we're a little bit over on that budget. It's not just the special ed. And kudos to the Board of Ed to find these monies. But, you know, they started with almost $700,000. Um, it's it, it's something that you know we we really want to talk about, but I'm looking at some of the um, commitments that we have going down the road. We have 850, we have 270 to cover the board of ed. Um, I'm not even getting into the million dollars. Potentially 650 thousand if Weed Beach doesn't get completed and put into the budget. We have maybe um, any place between 500 to a million dollars on the master plan for Great Island. That starts, all those come out of the general fund and, and those start to reduce the amount of funds that are potentially available to pay for capital or other things there. So it's just something that we should be taking into consideration. And I know the Board of Finance does, but it's it's almost, you have a list over here and you're trying to cover this, 
And, you know, they're not matching up so well. So, I mean, that's just my opinion on special appropriations. It's that, you know, there are times when they should be here, but there are other times that, you know, can you wait a year before you do it? Um, anyway, let's go to the Board of Ed. I'll let Beth and Peter kick it off, and then I'll tell you some stuff that I've done. So you guys can, that's going to be discussed tomorrow at the Board of Finance meeting. Do we all agree that the Board of Ed 6.48 is too high? Peter, are you saying it's okay? I'm, well, I, I'm trying to understand it, and I, I use the word understand and um, because you know, we've talked about guidance, and I, I would like to hear more on the the calculus with which guidance is is has been uh, uh, determined at, at again in the three three and a half to four percent. Because if it's a three and a half to four, if it's three and a half to four percent, and we're in a roughly that that neighborhood of inflationary um, 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 exposure, then really we're saying is the is the increase over over inflation, you know, two to three percent, and or excuse me, th you know, three to four percent. So I really I'm just trying to understand how the guidance, what's reasonable and not reasonable. As you said earlier, you know, that was going to be a major topic of the discussion. It's really what what my, my focus is because if if we're incorporating if we're if from my point of view if you're going to do guidance you have to start the before for the guidance is what the inflate the relevant inflation rate is going to be for the budgetary period and then it proceeds from there so if it's if 6.3 or whatever it is is that's 3.3 over a three percent guidance well, it's three and a half to four on the guidance. Three and a half to four, fine. All right. So, so really, if it's six point six point and change, then that's only two point and change over the guy over inflation, which well, isn't we, all well that bad. Guy, wait, wait, wait. But it's also it's also since we're dealing with numbers here, on the other side of that, it's over sixty percent over what the guidance was. So okay, but it, the guidance, it, the, I'm guidance. the guidance, the guidance. Yeah, yeah I, I don't. Yeah. I don't think it's neither either here nor there because I, the guidance was never going to be able to be adhered to because of the contractual obligations and the health. So you were already going to be over it. So which is which makes it, which isn't just means that it wasn't helpful in it. So it's it can't. It's just not a helpful measure. I think for me, I my issue is not the percentage increase. It's it's the same. It's that I don't know what the priorities are. I I become less confident when things are presented on Super Saturday um, that have to do with restructuring and getting rid of teachers and and not being able to answer questions about team models or whatever. It it just to me that's why you have meetings during the year. You talk about this stuff. Oh, I think we have a more efficient way of doing things. It's we need to move away from the pure team model. Do that during the year and then put it, you know, I, I just I just didn't understand. And so it's not really a dollar figure for me because I the schools are important to me just on a personal level. But um I I and I don't understand why we never say squat about our sports budget and we get rid of teachers. I, I just, I, I just don't understand it. I don't know where the priorities are. So his, his, I have some words for what I saw in the budget. All right. And that was, first of all, whatever the superintendent recommended, whether or not you agreed with it or not, was virtually all rejected. A good part of it was rejected. They still went up three hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars, of of which one hundred and fifty was um, desks. And um, so they still went up one hundred and eighty thousand from what the superintendent had there by rejecting certain things. 
But that's with the savings that are going to be going on with with the transportation, because I'm I'm going to say there's still two to four hundred thousand dollars worth of savings in the first year from the switching the transportation. It grows more because we're not capturing the full summer um, and that. But and and the cash flow is negative in the first year. It's a two year payback from what I'm looking at, if the numbers are even reasonably right. But they added one hundred and eighty thousand dollars. So things that they didn't look at. So they took one hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of desks, which represents two thirds of all the desks in Darien High School. That wasn't allocated over the last three years. And in the year that you have a six plus percent budget, that's the year you add that in. Come on. They didn't think and say, you know, anecdotally, we know that not all teachers are using the technology that we're buying for them. So maybe we should save some of that. Oh, yeah. And by the way, on the desk, they originally stuck it in capital, which I wish they would have left it in because that was going to be an easy cut on the floor of the RTM. Um, and, and anecdotally, People are using the desks that they have now and they're working. So it's not that they need to replace all these desks this year. But they don't look at other things. Could they have taken all the technology that we were going to purchase this year for or fiscal year 25 and take year one, year two, and year three schedule and move year one to year two, two to year three, three to year four, and push the whole schedule out for a year? Was what was the, was the world going to crash if we didn't buy almost every one of those pieces of technology that's in the budget? Tend to believe it wouldn't. Let's let's look at uniforms. So, I I understand that parents. I I was saying this to somebody, and somebody said I'm going to get a whole bunch of hate mail from it. I understand all those elementary school parents that are concerned about what's going on in the education. And the mere fact that their kids won't get a good education because our sports uniforms are in shreds and needed to be repaired this year. No, they all could have been moved back with the exception of the hygienic uniforms that we're doing. Saves another $100,000 here. Or there. Nothing that I've mentioned really affects education. Okay, there's a new course with this new tablet that the presentation was great. And my my son went to an art school and works in the fashion industry. So I am very much in favor of using art and those um, services as another outlet because not everyone's going to become an engineer or a um, investment banker. But did you really need to put it in this year? With everything else that was driving what was going on, could you have deferred it for a year? These are questions that really I would have hoped the board to do. But Jim has his hand up, and I'm always asked, tell him that I mute him too much. So I'm going to let Jim talk for a second. Jim, unmute yourself. Hey, Jack, the, the one point I was just going to make, I'm not sure which one of your colleagues there was kind of just talking about, like, the inflation and on the contracts and everything. I mean, I, I think everyone on this call is probably well aware that the largest single labor contract that we have is a teacher's contract. Um, and I think maybe Peter is asking a question about the uh, the derivation, the origination of sort of the guidance and so forth. This is the second year in the new teacher's contract. Last year was the first year. So generally and directionally speaking, the increases that are happening from the current year to next year are the same as the ones that happened last year to this year. Now, absent a very, very small rounding error in their projected deficit right now, like $100,000 on $119 million budget. So very small, and it's been declining every month. The Board of Ed, on the heels of the exact same contract that they're planning for next year, and on the heels of healthcare costs that are continuing to go up, Last year, their their actual spending, the dollars that they actually spend, not what they budgeted, but their actual spending 
will be up 4% from the year prior. So under the same contracts, largely absent some smaller contracts, this year it's going up 6.5%. So when we talk about sort of inflation, the budget doesn't necessarily include that much gasoline, home prices, airline tickets, um, consumer food and other things like is reported on monthly here in the inflation index. It includes teacher salaries, which are under the exact same contract as they were last year. Many of the other contracts that are basically identical to last year. The enrollment, you know, continuing to go down each year, about 15, 20 basis points per year. So there's not a lot that has changed this year versus last year, even though, you know, home prices may have risen and airline tickets and some other sort of things that have topped the inflation index for the last, you know, 13, 14 months. That's not necessarily built into this budget. Yeah. It's and then I think it, go ahead. I was just going to say, and Jim then continued, you know, somebody else mentioned to me inflation, but if you look at what the inflation numbers are with the prices of homes, purchasing cars, used cars, purchases, that doesn't get into uh, food costs. That doesn't get into a board of ed budget. Doesn't get into a town budget greatly other than in the um, senior center. So anyhow, I'm sorry to cut you off, Jim. No, I mean, Jack, that's, that's my exact point. So when people loosely use the word inflation, the normal household effect of inflation isn't making its way into this budget. Things like gasoline are in it. Thankfully, I think you all know that's actually down and so forth. So the, the things that go up and drive the budget are contractually locked in. And the teachers, it's the same contract that we had last year when we were having the same conversation. And then the other thing I would point out is, you know, when you look at enrollment, I mentioned it's continued to go down year after year after year, 20 to 30 basis points per year. There's a lot of discussion. And if you all were able to look through the, the back end of the Board of Ed budget, there's a consultant that was hired that came in and looked at calibrating the student, the, the, uh, the teacher population to the enrollment and doing that you know, on a school by school basis and so forth. And that expert consultant that they brought in to kind of take a look at this recommended that we need to calibrate if we want to stay inside the guidelines that the nine members of the Board of Fed um, have published. That I, I, I don't, I go back and look at some of my notes. I think that was largely rejected as part of this. So, you know, if, you, if the enrollment continues to drop, and we don't calibrate our um, our staff the same way that you know the superintendent has done every single one of the years that I've been here when they look at enrollment in the elementary school and how many kids have signed up that July, that August. If we don't do that, the per people expenditures are just going to go up. And I didn't hear any dis discussion at the board of ed level. I think Jack let me know if I missed anything about them talking about changing their guidance on class sizes. Nope. Look, so ultimately, fix, this is a fixed cost business. It's price and quantity. Price, if you look at the contracts, is basically the same as last year, right? Quantity of children have kind of gone down by a little bit. I think they, the Board of Ed really needs to think, of, think about and I think maybe explain sort of how exactly the student class size policy works and how it's implemented by either them or the superintendent. Yeah, even, and, and that's the thing. Even if you look at what Jim provided as the top of his line, which is 4%, which is really under what the teacher's contracts and the administrative contracts are, which is really a very big lion's share of what's going on. And, and the fact in all those contracts, there's an extra percentage point of what the employee is paying for the cost of health care. Um, you know, it, this is, this goes beyond that. This is, as I said, you, you got to take some tough looks at things and say, you know, I, I, I'm going to run everything. I'm going to have everything else that I want and I'm going to keep on going. 
and I don't have a financial responsibility. And shame on the board of finance or the RTM if they want to actually act within some financial responsibility. And, and and that's not what people were elected for. You you have to balance both the value of the education with the value of um, the course. But here I just mentioned three or four things that quite easily could easily add up to a half million dollars. With and, and and we haven't even gotten into some of the nits and nats of what's what's going on. We haven't talked about staffing. I back a number of years ago, there was a saying that I was using, and those who have been around for a while, maybe Bill recalls. Things that get measured get managed. So one of the things that always surprised me, because I asked this, you know, our system principles are meeting a lot of PPTs that's using up a lot of their time. And the number of PPTs we have tend to be more than what our peer groups have. So I'm going to say two things here. Number one, that's not a bad thing. But when I ask, can, does anybody know why somebody's having that PPT? There's 13 classifications or maybe even 14 at this stage of the game of disabilities that the federal government has to which the town has to report on. Are we having them because we're meeting a lot on social emotional? Well, they can't tell us that. Well, if you can't tell us that, how are you managing that? And quite honestly, I'm going to again give my own opinion. If we have our assistant principals meeting with young people on social emotional issues, which could at times be three or four times within a couple of weeks as somebody's going through a very traumatic part in their life, boy, I'm going to tell you I value that assistant principal being in that PPT much more than I do them walking the halls. And so maybe it's time that you take a look at what you're asking them to do and reprioritize that. But if you can't answer that question of what are they meeting on PPTs, then I don't understand how you're probably managing it well. And by the way, I understand that it's important to have assistant principals in the lower levels over working with teachers in, in the classroom. But, you know, we have subject matter chairs. So why are we sending an assistant principal in to work with the teacher and how their teaching styles are when we have an English or we have a math or we have a social studies um, department head who's supposed to be doing that and has expertise in what that teacher is supposed to be teaching? where the assistant principal may not. So I didn't understand that. So just how many meetings are we asking them to attend? Do all of them need to be there? These are all the questions that, and, and, and the worst part is I'm mentioning them now in the public. And honestly, I really don't want to know because that gets into micromanaging, which is not our role. But gosh, I wish those things were being asked. Well, there's no way for it to be asked because there's only deep dives during budget season, at least, you know, this way. And that's kind of what I was saying. Like, it's unfortunate that the we can't watch meetings, you know, in July and August that talk about PPT meetings and things like that, because it's it, these things are com are complicated, I'm sure. And then you just can't answer them in January. Well, and it makes us and it makes us wonder because we don't hear. It's really not not our purview. Yeah. And, and you know, as, as I said, I don't want to get down into that. But but gosh, if you can't answer some of the bait. Having been a consultant and an internal consultant sent in at the organizations I've worked to fix problems. I, I, if if you can't give some basic detail on that, 
to really give an explanation, it, 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 it's an unsettled feeling that the solution is throwing in another uh, body there to solve it. Um, so, but Jenny, you wanted to say something before. Yeah, I'm going to take a little higher, uh, higher altitude viewpoint. Um, I know Jill and John here are on the, on the call and they, I'm going to, I know there's been suggestions in, in, in saying we're not trying to micromanage. There's been some suggestions that, um, get into the weeds, but my, from where I sit, I'd love to see, um, if if the overall board of ed budget could get a five handle on it, five percent handle on it, high fives, whatever it is, I think that would go a long way for me. I under, I recognize that we're in a new era. Um, something over, well over four percent is something we're going to be expecting anyway. My when we talk about inflation in the budget, I don't I I understand Jim Palin what you were saying about there's nothing really inflationary in the board of ed budget but what is inflationary are the taxpayers who have to pay for it the people who are actually going to have to fund this bill are experiencing they're experiencing higher cost of living and and when we're talking about 10% increases in taxes or or you know whatever the Any number or more. Is, could be more that number is real. So I'm back to, can it wait? What in these budgets, both the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Ed budget, what can wait? What will, can we kick the can for a year on something or spread something out over a few years so that we just slow the roll a little bit? And that's that's my two cents. I just want, Jim, I'm going to call on you in two seconds. I just want to say, because this is something that I did, based upon the um, the superintendent's proposed budget, to get to a five percent handle would have meant that there was approximately one point four million that would have had to been reduced. Under the current budget, it would be a one point seven reduction to the budget, just so that we can size what that is. Jim, you had your hand up. Yeah, Jack, I think one of your colleagues made a great um, observation that there's really not time during the um, 33 days that the review that the Board of Ed is reviewing the budget to kind of dive deeply into some of these bigger issues, insurance, class size. I, f I forgot what some of the other ones were mentioned. And I think, you know, you've, you've heard me be a big proponent of not leaving those 32 days for the days in which you try to open up the policy and idea box and start looking at stuff for the first time. Once the Board of Ed passes its budget and they gave it to us on, they brought that big book in on March 5th and get, gave it to us, they have 19 meetings between then and when they submit the next budget. So, uh, you know, we've always encouraged them that to take those 19 meetings and really dig into things that came up, everything from participation fees to transportation, whether it be outsourcing, insourcing, mixture of two, all of those things, use those 19 meetings effectively to kind of dig into all of that and hand it to your superintendent about what you want his priorities. And frankly, I, I, I think they should be giving the superintendent some budget guidance, but um as it relates to uh, that, I think that would produce a better end product. Hold on, I'm doing budget. something, Michelle. All right, John. John Cini, you can speak. You're live. Oh, I mean, sorry. I mean, I love Jim and everything, but I think, uh, and based on some previous comments, you know, Jim, you're forgetting we had that meeting on the insurance. Um, so anyway, there's a lot of criticisms right now, and I think I was pretty transparent where I stood on the budget. But I would just ask you all to focus on kind of what your role is here and not criticize the Board of Ed. I think a lot of the policy stuff we discussed that, um, you know, was just raised. So, um, you know, we talked a lot about this. PPTs, we had a full review on special ed. And, uh, you know, I'll be honest with you. It, the increases as they stand now are unsustainable. And it's something I think the board will look at very closely going forward. But 
Also, we have to remember what happened in 2015 and the reverberations from that. So I guess I'll end there. But a lot of these policies were discussed throughout the year, including special ed and a full review. And we've been talking about PPTs. So I've just encouraged folks to have more faith in what we're doing throughout the year. And again, I'm frustrated where the majority of our uh, you know, board came out on its budget, but I voted for the full budget because if <laughs> you don't pass yeah. a budget, you, it reverts back to the previous year. So I will say, and I might get my hand slapped for this, but I can find an easy million without blinking an eye <laughs> and um, probably a million and a half uh, without impacting the uh, quality of education that our taxpayers. And what I've said also to a number of my constituents, uh, I'm sorry, fellow board members, a majority of our constituents and households don't have school-age children. I think what people are missing is, and, and it's it's been uh, kind of talked about amongst uh, some of the comments around taxpayers, but, um, you yeah, know, I guess the point being that I am very sensitive to what's going on in, in taxation. And I will also say that we hear a lot about Great Island, and I've had to bite my tongue on that because I have zero zero impact on how that's uh you know being decided but there is a lot of concern on that as well so i'll leave it at that sorry to ramble on john i just want to add something to what's just to make sure as i said even if there are ppts and you're right it may not be sustainable um if it is really helping kids i am in favor of it and and you know i am not challenging that they need to be how they're organized or other things like that who does them who doesn't that's the administration so as i said i even hate to raise some of these but i'm just saying as an outsider looking in there's things that i saw and i know you're more familiar with that budget as it stands now than myself that weren't discussed that could have possibly reduced certain things so it's funny, Jenny said 5%. Under the circumstances, and um, Jim, I'm going to throw something to you. Only I said a five handle, just, so, just to be clear, a five handle, a five right, point 5 something. Oh, yeah. okay. So um, just something to add to the list of things to look at at the Board of Ed during the next 15 months or so is um, I – just ask Jill, only because I didn't know we were doing it in the town side. But apparently, but apparently on the town side, we self-fund dental, and the Board of Ed doesn't. So that's something to to look for next year to see if that's beneficial for uh, the overall town and um, Board of Ed. So I just wanted to throw that out there onto what I'm calling the John Wolcott list at this stage of the game. Um, not anything we're going to deal with now, but I don't want to lose it. Somehow, I'm sort of at, if you're going to ask where I would be happy, is like at a 5.5% increase, understanding some of the drivers of what they've experienced in healthcare and other things that have gone down. I think transportation is um, better solved with what they're, the, what they're looking to do and um, and, and so I'm glad that they had a little more time to look at some alternatives, which I think are beneficial. Um, had they st started at the original 6.19 to get to a 5.5 would have been a $785,000 reduction. Um, now to get to a 5.5, um, amount is approximately a $1.2 million um, reduction. So I, I just want to throw that out because I, I, you know, ultimately there's two things that are going on. The board of finance will have their conversation tomorrow. They'll speak to the board of ed. Some of us will be there because we have nothing else to do. Um, and, um, then from there, um, will will there'll be a final number. If if the RTM isn't happy with that number, the RTM also has an opportunity to um, reduce the total appropriation. Um, I'm hoping we don't come to that. The other thing to consider 
is the capital projects that are out there and possibly deferring some of them to reduce the taxpayers. Because as I said, we have an opportunity to bond, pay with um, with cash of what's going on to or to tax or to deny. So those are some of the other things that we can um, talk about. I'm sure the Board of Finance will talk about. Um, if there's no other comments, uh, is there anybody else who wants to, I mean, think about where you are? Jill, I see your hand. Unmute yourself. Where are you? There you are. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'll just speak for my board this evening. Beth, were you going to speak? I can wait for you. No. Oh, okay. Um, I just think um, it's important for you all to understand that we certainly recognize that there are things that we can do better and differently. We took a, a long look at our process and have tried to move all of our goal setting to the spring. Um, so I hope that you'll join us in the spring when we actually put together our strategic plan and talk about the goals for the year and cue that up into how that, that informs our decisions going forward. And I think in a period of sustained um, large budgets, these become, these become critical conversations. So, um, you know, as we look at this year, we'll have to all be in a certain amount of partnership together. There is, it, this has been painful already. And it sounds like it will continue to be. Um, we all can agree that we care very deeply about the schools and nobody really likes really high taxes. So um, it's it's complicated. And as I said, as chair going into this, some folks are going to feel that our budgets are too high and some folks are going to feel they're too low. And depending on what they're solving for, they'll be right. So um, we will continue to put one foot in front of the other. Uh, but we do ask for your partnership and your um, understanding that sometimes in budgetary years, it's our desire to make as many decisions ahead of the, the process as possible. But when budgets get tight, sometimes you just have to look for whether or not there's a Hail Mary or something you haven't looked at yet or something that you just can't, you realize you, you can live without. Um, and so there are some decisions in this budget that in an ideal world, all things being equal would have been made ahead of time. Uh, but we threw in there and transportation is one of them. So anyway, thank you all for the time. Jill, I'm, I'm going to mention a couple of things. First of all, I'm still very impressed with all the work and how everybody partnered together between Jay-Z, Kate, Jen, um, yourself, Rich Rudel, um, Jim Palin, um, Ed, Ed Rochette and myself all looking at this um, to come up with what the, um, you know, but, and Alan, I forgot Alan, sorry, um, about coming up with this transportation and, um, you know, yeah, it would have been nice if it was done earlier, but still what the end result looks like is is a very nice teamwork and I think will give a good return to the schools and the taxpayers for years to come. So, you know, I'm, I'm very much in favor of the effort that was done there. And number two, while, while budgets are getting tough and um, F&B has been known to put up some budget cuts over the last couple of years or so, um, I will tell you, nobody likes cutting the budget. It, it is not necessarily the most fun thing, the the best budget years are when the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Ed get it absolutely right. It flies through the Board of Finance and F&B can vote by basically five minutes after they're done because we're all in agreement and we can go out for a drink at the Goose without calling it a, um, a, a, a violation of FOIA for a meeting. Mm -hmm. um, but... Um, you know, so this is a tough year. We understand that there are some drivers, which is why, you know, even with the guidance at 4% with that, I still think that a 5.5 is taking some of these drivers into account because I do know that there are certain things that were out of the control of the Board of Ed. So just to add that thought, this isn't, this isn't fun to be looking and having these conversations from our perspective because if you look here, I'll tell you, and, and you know this for our interactions over the years, I'm a very big supporter of our school system. 
And so um, it's never easy to also balance this as well as what we're going to experience this year through our tax plans. If there's nothing else to say, and I got seven minutes before the tip-off at UConn, um, do we have... Um, do I have a motion to um minutes? Oh, sorry, Jenny, minutes. Um, did everyone have a chance to review the minutes from the March meeting? And if there are no not any if there aren't any questions, please let me know. And if you want to move forward, I can ask for a motion to approve the minutes from hang on, it was March. Give me a minute. I think it was the eleventh. Yep. Yep. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Somebody raise their hand. Oh, I got yeah, that. Thank and, you. Then, <laughs> and then Charles is the second. Charles? Oh, yeah. God. Charles? Charles. Yeah. Charlie. P O. Charlie is the Charlie. Charlie's yeah. not Charlie. Yeah, sorry. Um, great. Charles All in favor? There. Unanimous. Thank you. All right, our next meeting is on the 8th, which is the night before the final Board of Finance vote. Um, so um, we'll just it's keep Monday. up to date on that. It's Monday on the 8th. We have a special meeting on the, um, I think it's the 24th, which is a Wednesday, um, so that um, depending upon how the Board of Finance addresses the transportation, if it's on the RTM budget, we will have to review and vote on it. But we'll know that after the ninth. So um, we're, we're, I'll keep everyone posted on that. In the meantime, hope everyone had a good holiday. Motion to adjourn. And a motion to adjourn. I was getting to that. I just wanted okay. to say it as well. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I have Jenny. I need a second. Louisa. Um, all in favor, say aye. Jill, aye. Jim, John, thank you very much for thank joining us. Thank you all. Us.